I'm gonna put in an automatic shutoff to this air compressor. It's a big boy. So how it's currently controlled is there is a switch right here on the wall that is also tied to that light and is also tied to a contactor in here. He has that light wired in so that he knows when that air compressor is on so that he can just walk in here, know if his air compressor is on or not, and then leave. Pretty easy, cool setup. So I'm just working with the little transformer here. I'm getting it mounted in the air compressor disconnect. Each of these wires mean something. The white is common, the black is 120, the red is 208 and the orange is 240 volts. So I'm gonna be working with the white and orange. This is a 240 volt system. I'm just wiring into the load side of this disconnect. That way, if the power is ever shut off, the solenoid won't try to open and close if that other switch is turned on. I'm just doing what's called pigtailing here. I took the load wires off of that disconnect and then I'm tying them to the primary side on this transformer. I'm just adding a piece, a little jumper wire and tying it back into that disconnect. The secondary side of this is 24 volt, so that's the solenoid that I bought. So I just ran an 18-2 thermostat wire over here to go from the secondary of the transformer to the solenoid. So that's what I'm making up here. Those wires are reversible on this. There's no polarity, so all I got to do is tie those two in to the secondary wires and it's good to go. So those wires going to this valve are just a normally open contact. So what that means is when that power turns on, that switch or the contact inside this solenoid valve closes. When that contact closes, it opens the valve. So it'll let air through there. So think of it kind of like a water valve shutting on and off. When the contacts are closed, it lets air through. When you shut that switch off that was in the shop that also controls that light bulb, it will take power away from that solenoid valve, which will automatically close the valve. What used to take 10 minutes for that compressor to build up air, now takes about 10 seconds to fill those lines. All right, so once this, as you heard, it just got done getting pumped up. So now we are going to shut that switch off over there and then go see if this solenoid shuts off when the air compressor shuts off. The point of this is there were enough little leaks in the lines that it would empty out this air compressor over time. So he didn't want that to happen. He wanted when him to shut that off. It'll keep the air inside of the unit. That's what we were going. Not sure if you guys can hear it, but there's a little bit of air running out there. So it should be off because I shut that off. The solenoid valve should close because that is shutting the air compressor off. So then we want to keep all the air in the tank. That is how we have this rigged up. Let's see if it works. So I should be able to drain all of these lines and then it should just shut off without draining the tank. All right, it works. So obviously what we have there is that solenoid valve closes right when that air compressor gets shut off. All that air can stay in the tank that way when he goes to turn that on, it'll just pump up all the lines in here and he's got total air compressed.